Now at six, lost overnight in snow-covered woods, a Salem mother hunkers down to protect her three-year-old son. I just had him underneath my shirt and my sweatshirt and he, I just kept him as warm as possible. How rescue crews were able to locate them. Trapped in quicksand, a hiker pulled from the depths is speaking out about his nightmare ordeal after a dramatic rescue. Plus, a little too close to the action. An errant puck nearly sends this hockey analyst to the ER as it whirls by his face. And on the brink of going broke, an Astoria couple strikes it rich. And it happened just right there when we needed it the most. Kyla Boshi is sharing their emotional story in a new edition of Instant Millionaire. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. All right, where should we start this half hour, Rod Hill? Please, With the millionaires. No, please say St. Oh. Helens. Oh, St. Helens. All right. Right. The millionaires of St. Helens. Good morning. All right, St. Helens is where we start. This is a live look downtown St. Helens on this Tuesday morning. It is February the 19th. I wish I could make you a millionaire, but sorry, not happening. I just want to get to the millionaire story. But we I'm sure will. we have other things. We're going to have Kyle here to talk about it soon. Hey, good morning. Thanks for waking up with us on this Tuesday. You know, kids back to school after the holiday yesterday. That's right. And, you know, yesterday we had the freezing fog and uh, speculating that maybe that icing produced some accidents. We're well above freezing this morning. Hey, take a quick look at Cannon Beach. A little bit of brightness from the setting uh, super snow moon as we look out over the Pacific this morning. Uh, and now to the bus stop we go. There are a few showers out there right now. Temperatures out the door for the kids be about 38. And then from lunchtime on, the number of showers start to become uh, more and more numerous. 42 at lunchtime, mid 40s, and the kids get out of school. Here's the radar right now. Again, that story kind of wet, and it's getting wetter as you get up near the uh, Cascades. Here's Chris McGinnis. You know, Rod, I think we can see a couple sprinkles or at least some drizzle on the uh, on the ODOT cameras here. Let's take you to the wall here. We'll show you the live look at the Sylvan Hill. Traffic still flowing freely on that side of town. We're still in pretty good shape there. We'll switch gears and take you up to Clark County, where we are bunching up. This is I-5 South at the Interstate Bridge. Single file, of course. SR 14 trying to get onto the interstate bridge this morning. Normal stuff there, guys. No major unexpected delays just yet. All right, thank you, Chris. It's 601. Less than two hours ago, we learned a legendary fashion designer has died. Carl Lagerfeld was the creative director for Chanel and Fendi. The BBC is reporting this morning he'd been ill for several weeks and missed a number of fashion shows. Carl Lagerfeld was 85 years old. And another story we are tracking. Senator Bernie Sanders announced he is running for president again in 2020. This is video when he visited Powell's in Portland a couple years ago for his book release. Sanders finished second to Hillary Clinton in 2016 for the Democratic nomination, but he is facing a much larger field this time around. At least 11 11 other people have declared they are running for the Democratic bid. Both of those stories new this morning. This is one we've been following, though, since yesterday morning. Oregon now officially one of 16 states that is suing President Trump over his national emergency declaration to pay for a border wall. And that is the focus of our viewer voice poll this morning. We want to hear from you. How do you feel about Oregon joining the lawsuit? You can vote right now. The legal challenge was announced as protesters gathered across the country in opposition to the declaration. So this was the scene, Brenda, yesterday at a rally in Vancouver. There was another demonstration happening as well at Portland's Waterfront Park. The people that we spoke to at these events say the president's move is a, quote, power grab. And they also said they're not just upset with the White House here. This un-American act sets an extremely dangerous precedent. President Trump should not have the option to declare an emergency every time he doesn't get his way. I'm more irritated with the Congress and that are not reacting, standing up to him, that are protecting him. That, that's chilling to me, you know, that they're not taking this stuff more seriously. So we haven't heard any response from the president yet about the protests or about the lawsuit. But again, we do want to hear from you this morning. How do you feel about Oregon joining the lawsuit against that national emergency? You can weigh in a couple of ways, kgw.com slash vote, or click on the Vote Now tab in our KGW News app. It is 604 now. A mother and her three year old son are recovering after spending the entire night stuck in the snow at Silver Falls State Park. They got lost while they were hiking at the park near Silverton. KGW's Tim Gordon is here and Tim, how are they doing? I actually mom suffered a little bit of frost nip. Otherwise, she's fine. And she kept her little boy uh, bundled up and safe waiting for help. But it was a long night.
We, we like going hiking. We've gone hiking there before several times, no issues, you know. This is Josie Chisholm, relieved she and her son Logan and her boyfriend are all okay. They went hiking Sunday afternoon. It was a beautiful time at Silver Falls. The winter scenery spectacular. But several hours into their hike, they got lost. The snow was knee deep. Oh, I started freaking out because it was dark and we were going in circles and I knew we were too. Josie and her boyfriend decided he would go for help while she and Logan stayed put. He left them reluctantly, concerned for their safety, but Josie and Logan did all right. They got under a tree for shelter, and the mother looked after her boy. I just had him underneath my shirt and my sweatshirt, and he, I just kept him as warm as possible. I, I would snug my nose and my mouth underneath my sweatshirt and just breathe hot air. In the morning, Josie heard searchers calling, and relief and gratitude set in. They were rescued and guided out of the park. I just like broke down in tears and it was it was nice to see someone. Good ending there. Josie's grateful to her boyfriend and rescuers and help couldn't have come soon enough. She says her feet felt so frozen she was really worried about them. But the frost nip really on her face and fingers. One other thing, you know, they've been hiking many times before, including at Silver Falls. This time they had trouble, never had before. A reminder that you should always be prepared, extra clothes, maybe some food and water, and keep track of time and exactly where you are. All right, Tim. What do we do? Stand up, fight back! Teachers and school staff rallied at Oregon State Capitol calling for more funding for schools. So this is something that teachers have been talking to us about in our Classrooms in Crisis series. We heard many of the same stories from teachers yesterday. Students throwing chairs, disrupting classrooms, taking away from instructional time for the other kids. Teachers told us about the lack of counselors in schools as well and the desperate need for more trained staff. Representative Barbara Smith, Barbara Smith Warner that is, told us the Joint Education Committee is working on a solution. We're going to do this this session. We're going to do it sooner rather than later. And I'm just eager to get it done. Everywhere I go, people say, are we really going to do it this year? And I say, yes, we are. The committee is working on a proposal to create a dedicated revenue stream for schools that would pay for mental health services and other resources. It's 6.07, time for some other national headlines in your morning rush. More than a dozen people had to be rescued after a SeaWorld ride left them stranded in midair. Fire officials snapped these pictures as passengers got off the Bayside Sky Ride in San Diego. Apparently a big gust of wind trapped or tripped rather a circuit breaker causing the ride to just stop. It took four long hours to get each of the 16 people back to dry land. And we've all seen this iconic photo, a sailor in New York celebrating the end of World War II, kissing a woman in Times Square. Well, we have learned that sailor, George Mendonca, died at the age of 95. During the war, he served on a Navy warship. His daughter says this picture was always an important part of his life. And check this out, drone video captured Las Vegas homes covered with a dusting of snow. It doesn't happen very often, but go figure. It's already snowed twice there just this month. The last time Las Vegas saw a trace of snow before this winter was on Christmas Day in 2015. And that's your Morning Rush. 6.08 is the time. We move now to this. I would say not the biggest story of the morning, but I'm going to call this the craziest video we're sharing this morning. I mean, look at that. That is hockey analyst Pierre Maguire. He is a rinkside reporter for NBC Sports during their hockey broadcast. And you see, that is a puck Jeez. flying off the stick of a player there in the ice, just breezing by his head. I, I think it actually may have like nicked his glasses. I mean, it, it is it, so, yeah, close so close to hitting him right in the face, which would have certainly uh, done damage, if not worse. You see, it does go past his face. I it ends up it touches him. No, I don't think so either, Brenda, Jeez. but man, it's close. It did hit the camera behind him. It broke the camera. Oh. Fortunately, McGuire wasn't hurt. The photographer wasn't hurt. Nobody was hurt, but that is crazy video. And there was plexiglass right there, so it was like the perfect Bizarre that angle like right, over the glass yeah. and then right over the gentleman's shoulder. Everyone is protected now with uh, netting wow. around the arena, but the players that are on the benches, they could still get hit by those oh. pucks. And that sideline reporter or that ringside reporter, they're sitting there in a position where they can get but hit a if helmet not on. attention. <laughs> That's why the players have no teeth, but <laughs> That's joy, part of it. reporting on it. <laughs>